Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you how I create an interior space using perspective drawing tools. So this video is sped up about 400 times. I'm using a tool called Hedge Stylus. I'll put links in the show notes. Uh, if you look and see how I'm approaching this, I'm using the perspective tool that Hedge Stylus has. Now, this is something that's available for the Mac. There's Lazy Nozumi for Windows. And you can see that it makes quick work of blocking out drawings in perspective. So if you're trying to save some time and you want to have some precision, you know, uh, I have more of a sketchy feel, I guess, than something that's super precise, but um, it certainly is a much faster way of working than using a ruler uh, on top of your Cintiq or your stylus. So um, I use this particular tool to block everything out in red. And now what I'm doing here is uh, switching to a the line tool within Hedge Stylus to go over my lines. And this allows me to go ahead and create all my vertical lines first. And I can adjust the two dots on either end of the uh, ruler to change its position. So what I'm doing is I'm tackling all the vertical lines first. And then I'm going to switch the orientation to all the horizontal lines and then lastly what I'll do is I'll come back in and I will um, deal with all the diagonal lines. It's, uh, it makes short work of drawing things in perspective. Uh, you certainly have to understand perspective. This is not like a shortcut to bypass understanding perspective but um, if you have some familiarity with perspective but you want to save yourself some time and you're running on a Mac, I would recommend Hedge Stylus. And again, Lazy Nozumi, I've heard, and I haven't used it for Windows, uh, does similar things. Uh, the version that I'm currently using is version, I think, 3.7. And this program is about, I think, roughly 20 bucks. It's well worth it, in my opinion. Um, again, if you're trying to beat a time crunch and you want to work more efficiently, um, this tool is a really good tool to have within your arsenal. And um, you, know, you can see here that I'm kind of uh, going back in and drawing this uh, rectangular structure. Uh, I'm also turning it off now and just adding some organic elements in using the lasso tool to clean up. I prefer using the lasso tool, as I've stated before, as opposed to the eraser tool. It's just more precise. It allows me to clean up stuff uh, and here I'm just blocking out what looks like a kitchen and there will be some modifications happening here before too long. So I've got background and I've got mid-ground elements here. Uh, you know, shortly I'll be adding some foreground elements on a new layer. Uh, thinking about composition. Here I'm putting a few little organic elements like a vase or a vase. You know, uh, trying a few different trash can iterations here. You know, just something to break up all, all the straight lines. Adding some curved lines in there just gives it a decent balance. Adding some little flex in the ground. Adding some texture uh, to the wood supports that are above. And, uh, you know, now I'm going to start doing my fills. I prefer to work in red and then change the uh, value to black just because uh, red is more of an intermediate stage for me. And adding a, a washer, dishwasher, I guess, cleaning up some of the lines of the cabinets. Then this is just more improv. Uh, you know, I'm not necessarily using references for this. It was just mostly a demonstration to show how I put an interior space together. So here's a foreground layer. I'm just adding some things that look like jars, cans, just other things that would be immediately in front of the mid-ground. And I'm doing that to create some depth. You'll see that this middle a uh, square will be turned into some kind of a hood or a vent. Sometimes I'll organically just change things as I work. 
and that's totally okay. It's a little toaster. Uh, you know, sometimes when I don't close gaps, when I use the uh, bucket tool, it floods in the whole value. Here I'm creating a window and I'm going back to the perspective tools and head stylus for that. You can toggle it on and off with the leftmost button. You can see what I'm doing there. It makes really short work. And you can set up the hotkey to hide head stylus. I use control one. Uh, you can use uh, your own keyboard shortcuts. It's customizable. It's really important to know your selection tools, regardless of what program you're using. We talk about selection tools in some of my earliest videos where I use this approach where I paint with shape. And adding black areas just, you know, you want to not rely heavily on color to do all the work for you. Adding some black fills just adds some drama and mood. It makes the space just have a little bit more uh, character. And I believe that your drawing should work well in black and white before you start adding color to it. If you're using color to fix things or add mood and lighting in and of itself, I think it's only half the battle. So here I'm using the True Get, uh, True Get Texture Supply, say that 10 times fast, uh, patterns and um, starting off with a dark blue uh, color and working monochromatically with light and dark variations. Um, again, using the uh, lasso tools and using the selection tools. And here I'll just add a focal point, which is gonna be the light. I've got a lot of cool colors, so when you have a light color or, a, you know, it, it gives you a sense of contrast. It pushes you into that direction. It is the most intense color value. And then I'm adding a little bit of the uh, light cast from the window just to fill up that area, to fill up that space. And I'm just playing with values now using the hue saturation tool and in some cases opacity to bump that down. And I'm adding some uh, variation to the wood there to make it darker. And I'm almost done now. The last thing I typically do is I work with uh, texture, pa uh, not patterns, but they're basically textures that you can find, uh, the watercolor textures. And I use that just to give a little subtle variation. So that's the final product. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video.